Well, you must be, um, you must be, it must feel pretty good, the reaction that this record has gotten in its first week, huh? Yeah, it's been a, it's, it's been surprising and, and, and wonderful, yeah. Surprising, really? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to know what you think about, I don't know. I, I, I find it hard to know what I thought about this record the whole way through. I, it's, I guess uh, sometimes sort of the pressure can sort of make you uh, doubt everything and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I like the way it sounds. I really like the way it sounds. Tell me about that, that pressure, Tim, because Into Your Lungs uh, from 2008 really put you guys into a, a new level of recognition, at least, in Canada. Uh, were you feeling pressure going into this record that you guys have to sort of somehow best to that? Otherwise, you're going to feel like a, you haven't kept the momentum going? Uh, yeah, I, th I mean, I think I think we all felt that to some degree, especially sort of from ourselves, I think, you know, like... Um, it, it kind of got serious, you know, on the, over, the, over the last record and over the last few years, and uh, and we felt like, you know, that we we don't have many excuses anymore, you know, like uh, we don't have other. We're jobs. young. What do we know? Yeah. We don't have, you know, we don't have, you know, we had a pretty good budget for this. We had a great producer, so we really, you know, um, wanted to bring it. You know. What does it became serious mean to you? Uh, well, it, it sort of became everything. I think is what it means to me, sort of. Um, and it has been going that way for a long time, you know, sort of. Um, but it, it became, you know, sort of, I think, our, at least my entire life, you know, yeah. Josh, was it daunting going into this record after what you, the popularity you had gained um, from all the touring you did around your last record? Yeah, I mean, I would say so to some extent. Um, I think most of the pressure maybe was sort of internal, though. We're kind of all being really hard on ourselves and uh, really pushing to have you know, the best sort of record that we could, I guess. And, uh, you know, like we said, we had a bigger budget and there was a big producer as Tony Dugan. Um, he did like Mogwai and, and Bell and Sebastian and stuff. Uh, anyway, yeah, so there was, you know, sort of a pressure to kind of live up to that, live up to the, the big budget and all the studio time and this big producer and all that stuff, so. How does the pressure play itself out when you say it was just internally in the band? I mean, well, is it like, Phil, you're just not playing the drums well enough. <laughs> Your chops are... <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not. That's I not could right. say it was ever like that. Yeah. But I mean, just on, your, on ourselves, I suppose, like me personally, I was like, oh God, I gotta, I gotta step up here and, you know, make sure that I, you know, sort of play my... Because it's just expensive to be in a studio. So you're thinking about that, like, oh God, it's however many dollars an hour I could screw this up and just like little things like that they kind of they add up I think well, I think we were lumped into a, a group of sort of bands that we we found a little surprising and 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 daunting you know with the Polaris thing and, and a, a bunch of different things we were sort of up there with these bands that, that we uh, we thought were just amazing and so mm -hmm. um, that was I think a lot of it you know. Uh, Tim, I, I feel like I, I, the re one of the reasons I know you guys so well is because I've seen you in so many places and said hello because you've constantly been on tour. I mean, or you, or you seem to have been constantly uh, over the last three years, which becomes an interesting question when a, suddenly a new Hey Rosetta record appears and you sort of think, well, where did, when did they write this thing? And I'm assuming you wrote a lot of this on the road. Um, I, wish, I wish that I could say that, that but I, I, um, I can't really uh right on the road it seems i mean maybe someday you know but um just never you never sort of by yourself you know you're never in sure sort of, like, yeah, sort of quietude that you to... need to listen to whatever's going on in your head you so know, were you so. banking songs as in between tours? pretty much yeah. yeah and and it would always you know for me i always thought you know i'm always looking forward to going home so so i can you know get some work done you know um which, uh, which is, I mean, I, I love writing songs, but that, that, I mean, that has an added pressure as well. You know, we're home for for a week and a half. Like, I gotta try to get something out. Yeah. You know, um, at the same time, trying to stop your house from flooding and all those. The, you know, life <laughs> is happening as well, and all these things happen in your absence. You know, so. Right. Yeah. And then, is it true that that like this was more of a collaborative effort, this record, than the previous ones? Is that true in terms of the writing? I think uh, um, we spent a lot more time together, like hashing these songs out. Does that sure. mean you've become less of a control freak? <laughs> I don't know if I'd say that. <laughs> what do you think, Josh? Josh? What? No, definitely not. No. No. <laughs> Tim is still the control freak. Yeah, absolutely. But I think we did actually spend a lot more time, like, bashing all of our heads together uh, to get these songs figured out. Mm. I don't know. Are we? I don't know if other bands do that like as much maybe I don't know we just like Tim comes in with these ideas for tunes and we just like 
played them hundreds and hundreds <laughs> of times. You don't want to, you know, I don't leave any stone unturned. You yeah, know? Right. We well, could do you, it this way, or we could do it at halftime, or we could do it in yeah. But you've you also know? developed a reputation as a great live band, and that's probably because you're spending hundreds of times jamming these these songs, right? <laughs> this this idea that this record, I mean, certainly this is what I said about it. I, I've read a few people saying this, that, that you've subtly reined in your large sound a little bit on this record, on Seeds. Did you want to explore a more restrained territory, Josh? Um, I would I would think that maybe had a lot to do with uh, Tony, the producer. He's uh, he likes to keep things sort of concise. I think um, so. A lot of times we would kind of be butting heads with him, even uh, just to like, no, we really want this to be sort of bigger, longer, more lush, or add more weird stuff. And a lot of times he'd be like, no, I really think this should be more sort of short and sweet. Mm. And uh, yeah, I think I think a lot of that has to do with him. They're still epic on the record. I mean, yeah. the song you just played is, yeah. you know, there's time changes. <laughs> <laughs> you like that. You, Tim, I'm assuming that that's a song only feels complete to you when it has a uh, some dramatic well, dynamics the, to I mean, it. That is, like you said, that is something that I, I, I try to rein in a little bit, you know, um, not trying to do everything in every song, you know, not trying to do everything possible <laughs> in every song. Like there was a, a couple of songs on the record that, you know, just a groove kind of works, like let that breathe, let that live, like so many bands that we listen to and love, you know. Um, so I think there was a, yeah, sort of a, um, I hesitate to, word, to use the word maturation, but, but sort of a, an understanding that like it doesn't have to be everything all the time in right. every song. You know? Well, you also start to realize, I guess when you're making your first record, it's like we got to pour everything that we are and have been into this record. Now you're starting to realize you, you might you have a career, and so you don't ha everything doesn't have to be on every record, right? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Maybe. I was trying to rephrase what you said, but I, I guess I didn't do a good enough job of it. <laughs> this yeah. record is called Seeds. There's a quasi kind of uh, sustainable development environmental uh, message that comes along with this, Josh. Where did that come from? Um, I guess it was really maybe Tim, you could probably answer this one better. Just a couple of like documentaries and stuff that are out there, you know, ha outlining some of these issues that exist in, you know, say like the farming industry. Mm. And uh, yeah, I mean, I yeah, guess. Well, I mean, I I saw I saw some of these um, some of these things like the World According to Monsanto or Food Inc. and they, and and um, really startling startling things and, and and I think you know important things like you know food. Uh, pretty important to your daily life <laughs> and and uh I, mean, I didn't want to be preachy or anything so we we did uh end up just because you know because the song the, the album is called seeds and that's not why it's called seeds or anything mm. i mean it's a much more sort of robust metaphor for uh, lots of other things going on there like what well i um Obviously, there's a title track, and in that in that song, sort of like we, you know, we are seeds. Like we travel around and we settle uh -huh. down, and we try to make something bigger than than ourselves. You know, on on these stages around. You spread your seeds uh, well, <laughs> in each town. Um, yeah, that yeah. <laughs> sounds a little. Yeah, you're pretty. Well, yeah, we'll say yes. Yeah, metaphorically. Right. I meant uh, it quite professionally. Yeah, but good. You, you yeah. thought it meant something else, apparently. Well, you know. Um, yeah, and and. <laughs> And I like that as a as a title of the Tim, record. Tim, you've gone remarkably red. Yeah, well, no, no, it's the, the lights in here. The Newfoundlander that you are. It's lighting. <laughs> it's the lighting. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, just the the idea of the album, uh, you know, is songs as seeds and songs that that are, you know, so just these four and a half, five minute, yeah. occasionally six and a half minute things that can then can sort of take root in your in your mind as a listener and and grow into something bigger and more meaningful. You know? But when you include a packet of seeds, plantable seeds, mm -hmm. with, with each record, a uh, physical record that people buy, there's clearly, you, you're, you're sort of underscoring the message there, right? I mean, what is your yeah, intent with that? that's taking the metaphor to a, like another level, I guess. Yeah. And um, I don't know, I just, I, I, uh, I like treats, you know, <laughs> in, in records. And, like, and that was a, a friend of mine, my neighbor actually, is this uh, great sort of artisan paper maker, and, and, and she kind of had this idea. She mentioned that you can, you know, you can embed seeds in paper and just plant, th just water them, and they grow. And that's, you know, that's recycled cardboard and all yeah, that. Yeah, but stuff. I mean, that's that's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Mm. Um, and I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think so, a lot of people are sort of coming back to that, coming back to farming and, and growing food. But it's a pretty beautiful thing when you when you think about it. Yeah. You talked about the. Um, uh, I want. I want to get you guys to play another song, and so I'm 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 sort of type of time here. But let me try and get this in here. You, you talked about the. 
the the pressure or the maybe the surprise um, uh, um, and the flattery of being included with those those other groups when you were nominated to, on the shortlist for the Polaris Music Prize. When people compare you, when critics compare you to other bands, and in, in particular in reviewing this record, they're always hugely successful bands. No one compares you to like, like <laughs> middle ranked bands. It's always U two or Arcade Fire or Coldplay. Uh, and, and in particular, this Arcade Fire thing, I hadn't heard it a lot before, but it's been recent maybe because they just won the Grammy and the, and the Brit Awards. But what does that kind of comparison mean to you? Uh, well, yeah, that is very flattering. I mean, that's amazing. Th those bands, you know, I don't know. It almost doesn't even make sense. Um, but uh, it's flattering, you know. When you Bring watch Arcade Fire win the Album of the Year Grammy... Do you, do you, didn't actually well, you didn't watch it. We were sleeping on the floor of a ferry tournament. Say you were watching it. You were sleeping on the floor of a ferry tournament. Yeah. yeah. Newfoundland winter weather. Yeah. Right. You just couldn't get the Because the, the house was flooded, so you went to the ferry tournament? <laughs> yeah. That's where I spent the weekend. <laughs> right. Right. Port of Basque. Were you to have seen Arcade Fire mm -hmm. winning the Grammy Award? Do you, uh, or, or, or with bands like this, I mean, is that, uh, do you do you want um, hey Rose, that kind of fame for Hey Rosetta? I don't I don't know. I don't I mean it'd be all right, but it's not it's definitely not the end, you know. Um No, I, I mean for me it's always been the, like a reactionary thing. This band has always been it's just been growing on its own and we've been trying to react to it, you know. It's uh, never a global domination sort of thing, you know, uh, philosophy. I mean, I know that Josh know, wants global domination. Well, except no, for Josh. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that guy. <laughs> Uh, I know, I know our, you know, our, our, our management and our label and our publicists and all the wonderful people that work for us, you know, do work towards that, I'm sure. Um, mm. But we just, uh, you know, just want to make music that, that pleases us and that feels good to play for people. I love that you know? idea that uh, you're, you're catching up to your own success uh, always. <laughs> that, that's a, it's a very interesting idea. Congrats on this record. It's really nice to see you guys. And thanks for bringing the whole band in here. You, you, what, yeah. You're going to play another song for us. Yes. Yeah. What, what are you going to play for us now? Uh, we're going to we're going to play uh, the single, quote unquote, uh, which is welcome. Welcome. Right? Yeah. All right. Intentionally not playing the song that I, I wanted you to play. Listen, to that. <laughs> defiantly, much like no, I'm kidding. Uh, we'll play your spring as a as a as a bonus maybe. Uh, yeah. I love welcome. Please head on over there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tim Baker uh, and Josh Ward, uh, a couple of the members of Hey Rosetta. They are joined by Romesh. Tavanathan, uh, Adam Hogan, Kinley Dowling, Brooke Stewart, Phil Maloney. Uh, they've put out this very strong new record called Seeds. They're here live in Studio Q performing from it, and they're going to play the single now. Um, it's a song called Welcome. Whenever you're ready, take it away, guys. 